In this edition of City News, see what event brought many out to enjoy live music at a local park. Also learn about the big upgrades at Losinger High School. Plus find out why residents lined up in costumes. These stories and much more coming up on City News. Hello and welcome to City News, I'm Jennifer Murillo. The city of Hawthorne hosted a fiesta at Hawthorne Memorial Park. Eric J. Dockery takes us to the event. This was the very first time the city of Hawthorne hosted a fiesta in the park in celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month. It feels great to bring this type of event to the city of Hawthorne because we're bringing people out. We're encouraging people to come out and dance and just not just listen to music, but come out and dance and get to meet their neighbors and just kind of savor some Latino food, Hispanic food, and just enjoy the good Latino music. Local businesses in the city of Hawthorne provided food and drinks and like to support the event. Me, California, we have Continental uh, Market for Empanaditas. Uh, California provided taquitos, chips and salsa. We have uh, from Pan America, we have some pan dulce. And just everybody quickly that just said yes, we'll donate and give this to you free. The city had live music performed all night and even a live cultural dance. I am so proud. It takes so much courage to put yourself out there and uh, just Keep a big smile on even when you don't 100% feel confident because dancing is so such an intimate part of the human experience. There was over 100 residents who came out to celebrate. Feels great out here with my mom. We're all here dancing, enjoying the girls dancing and everything. Great. Everybody seems to be like a big family here. And uh, you just see how happy everybody is, especially what's going on in the world right now. We need happiness. Just. Have fun. Council members both agree this won't be the last fiesta in the park that will be celebrated in the city. For HDTV, I'm Eric J. Dockery. To learn more about other events happening in the city, visit the city's website at www.cityofhawthorne.org. A spooktacular event brought the community together at a local park. Reporter Stephanie Canova has the details. I'm here at Hawthorne Memorial Park. I've got my costume and my Halloween treat pail, and I'm ready to have a witching good time. The city of Hawthorne was brewing up a fun-filled day for people of all ages. Many lined up in their costumes for this year's Halloween Spooktacular Carnival. This event was put together by the Community <laughs> Services Department and many different organizations within the community of Hawthorne. First and foremost, um, it's a free event, so people can come. There's no financial hardship on any family, so they're, they're free to come out here, enjoy of trick-or-treating stations. We have carnival games for the kids. There's different organizations giving out lots of free goodies. Uh, and then our police department is here too, uh, representing for the community. I think this is the biggest one so far, because you know how during the pandemic, we tried to do it inside and outside a little bit. But I think this one, I think is one of the biggest ones I have seen. People had an opportunity to participate in a scavenger hunt. Each family would get one orange scavenger hunt card and once they visited all the stations on the card, they would win a prize that they could claim at the community services booth. There was also face painting, food vendors, jumpers, and even a photo op station to take some Halloween pictures with their loved ones. This is a good event that they do every year that I think that really brings out a lot of the joy in the kids. You see a lot of smiles here. Candy wasn't the only thing that was being given out at this carnival. Lots of free, helpful information as well as prizes and books. We want to make sure that the kids are having fun, so we brought the wheel out. Uh, depending on where the wheel ends or you know where it lands, they get uh, you know some mini mouse ears, uh, some pens, some yo-yos. So just to show them a good time. Books take you places that electronics can't. We give them out at every event. If we're doing turkey giveaways, if we're doing toy giveaways, no matter what we're doing, we give our books. This year's Halloween Carnival seemed to have a great turnout. With over a thousand people attending, it was hard not to notice all the interesting costumes. Some of the children wanted to share what costumes they were wearing. My friend's going to be a hot dog and it's going to be a bacon with hot dog. 
It's supposed to be like a plain red suit, and it's called a Morph suit. It's called. It's from Rise of Invasions. It's his name is Smiley. This Halloween carnival was definitely one for the books. For HCTV, I'm Stephanie Canova. If you missed the Halloween Spooktacular Carnival, be sure to follow the city's Instagram account by searching City of Hawthorne CA for more events and useful information. The Sentinella Valley Union High School District held a ribbon-cutting ceremony at Losinger High School Football Stadium. Here is Eric J. Dockery with the story. The Sentinella Valley Union High School District hosted a ceremony to celebrate the completion of this new athletic complex. The Olympians now have upgraded their playing fields to tend to all their athletes. We have a beautiful brand new baseball field, mm -hmm. we've got a beautiful brand new softball field, and we've got a practice field for off seasons and things like that. We've got new basketball courts, it's just amazing. We've got a new athletic training room, we've got new concession stands, new bathrooms, it's beautiful. The project took about three years to complete. Today is a great celebration in terms of our construction of our fields, athletic complex, and we're talking about soccer, baseball, football. This is what I would refer to as a, as a, as a, like a baby sofa. Everything was leveled and then we came in and we just we put in turf so uh, they had to uh, put in a whole drainage system underneath to, because uh, you know it's not the same where the, it's, it's regular earth underneath so they have a whole drainage system to take everything out. The turf allows a smoother playing field and prevents injuries that was caused by dirt. I feel fantastic. I feel incredible. Um, we get the kids out here running out on this brand new turf also with the Jumbotron. It was, it, was, it, was, it was good. The investment in the community, and it's more than just athletics, it's about investing in these kids. Sometimes sports is that connective tissue that keeps kids in school, keeping them engaged. The ceremony attracted alumni and even honored one of Losing Gur's own. Night and day, yeah. The field was, sometimes it was flat and sometimes it wasn't, but it was, uh, it was, uh, the stands were smaller. Uh, you know, it just, this is an amazing field. My mother, grandmother, um, uncle all graduated from here, but my mother also worked here um, in the 80s until 2004. And in 2021, they named the cafeteria after my mom. Looks quite different, but it's, it's new. It, it, it's the state of the art and the facilities for the students and, it's, and the programs that uh, we discussed uh, in a tour with the principal is fantastic. The new complex is hoped to attract more students and keep the traditions alive. For HCTV, I'm Eric J. Dockery. To learn more about Lunziger High School, visit their school website at www.lunziger.org. Coming up next on City News, learn why residents gathered for a hot meal. Plus, learn ways on how to save on your electricity. There's more news ahead. We'll be right back. Welcome back. An annual event brought many people together at a local center. Reporter Stephanie Canova has the scoop. We're here at the Hawthorne Memorial Center where everyone's enjoying some good food for a great cause. The Hawthorne President's Council held their 41st annual community dinner to raise funds for the holidays. This dinner actually is to raise money uh, for to benefit the holiday assistance program that is Thanksgiving uh, baskets so where we give people gift cards or turkey to go buy their, their products and Christmas that we give toys and foods. Dinner tickets for children and adults were for a three course meal. For the main course, they had the choice between turkey, sausage, or ground beef spaghetti. It's always a spaghetti dinner, you know, making it easy for those that uh, might not be able to eat other types of food that is made. So it's kind of a, a custom. Everybody knows it's a spaghetti dinner and what to expect. And just the, uh, the you know, the community coming together and, and eating together. Uh, it's a good thing and uh, folks seems to, to like it. Raffle tickets were also sold for an opportunity to win all types of great prizes that were donated by the community. Several attendees expressed why it was important for them to participate in these types of events. The, these events, it helps the, the community, not only that, it helps the city, and um, uh, it's fun. I think networking is very important for people to get to know the community and then be able to help and serve the community better. I think it's important to remember the fact that we all live in the same area and 
when we're also separated by our different titles, like our jobs and our responsibilities and stuff, I feel like it's important to always get together and remind ourselves that we're all in the same community and we're all humans and we all love to enjoy some pasta with our fellow community members. Over $5,000 was raised at this year's community dinner, which proves that when the community comes together as a team, it can make a difference in our community. For HCTV, I'm Stephanie Canova. To find out about other events happening in the city, visit the city's website at www.cityofhawthorne.org and look under Latest News. With power outages happening, there are ways to be prepared and alert for them. Tony Long Jr. shows us how. The city of Hawthorne and Southern California Edison stopped by the senior center as to explain how people could get information on schedule outages, service requests, and rebates they offer. We decided to bring them, bring Edison on board today because it's important for our residents to understand why there's different types of outages and what they mean. Everyone, especially seniors, are advised to keep updating their contact information with Edison so they can stay updated on emergencies. So during an emergency event, we, we can be pushing out information, but it's not getting to that customer, to that person. So it's important that our customers, our elderly community, know that we're able to engage with them and that we're pushing out information to them. Other resources are offered to help seniors. They do have certain programs like um, they have a medical program that if you do need any type of energy for your medical device that they do have a program for that and it's just a matter of them reaching out to Edison so that they can um, provide them with that information. Seniors said that they picked up valuable information from the presentation. Around my house I've been having a lot of problems with electricity because the squirrels chewing on the the, the cables, and I didn't know where to call, to tell you the truth, so now it's very important to know all that. Now I'm aware. The information about being prepared for emergencies, like he said his son had um, some kind of issues so that he no had to have the medicine if he had to move and all that kind of information. That, that was interesting, something to really think about. City of Hawthorne Associate Engineer Selena Acuna has said that there are hopes to plan with Edison for more power outage presentations to happen in the future and has encouraged local citizens to purchase a generator to alleviate some of the outages. For HCTV, this is Tony Long Jr. For more information on how SoCal Edison is meeting electricity demands of the community, view the presentation on the city website at www. CityofHawthorne.org and search for SCE Customer Resources. The Hawthorne Math and Science Academy recently received a top ranking in high schools in LA by the U.S. News and World Report. Here is Eric J. Dockery with the story. Hawthorne Math and Science Academy plays six in California, but they are in the top 1% of the best high schools in the nation. It's great. I mean, it, it validates the, the hard work that the kids do, that the teachers be do that all our staff does um, it's it's something to say hey, it's you know you, you're putting in the long hours and it's nice to know that people notice it HMSA is committed to its students and provides a rigorous lesson plan to prepare them for college I think it's a it's a collaborative effort that I get students who will come to me with a specific skill set and motivation a desire to learn to improve and it's just my job to try to help them realize what they've got and how to use it. It makes me feel good just that the fact that these kids are successful. Um, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. This is my 29th year in education. But, you know, these kids are the ones that make this super easy. Um, I know the content. I can understand and I can teach the material, but they make it easy because they're willing to learn. The students gain helpful tools throughout their time at HMSA to help them succeed in life and school. Making a schedule is a big one because it helps you not procrastinate because one of my biggest problems my freshman year was procrastination. Uh, I thought that I could carry on the study skills that I had from middle school to high school, but it wasn't working. So I learned that I had to really make a schedule for myself to make sure that I wasn't procrastinating and getting my work done. Honestly, my family really inspires me to choose math and science. Both my dad and my grandpa, and even me, uh, we weren't born here. So we came here with almost nothing. Seeing my dad and grandpa work like part-time jobs, you know, working with, like 40 to 60, 80 hours a week, truly inspired me to also be a hard worker. HMSA also encourages students to join organizations outside of school. 
like American Civil Liberties Union. It means a lot to me just because it does talk about school equity and so, um, systemic racism that happens in schools. And I feel that just being surrounded by peers who are also very ambitious and care about this topic has really just encouraged me to speak out a lot more. While receiving the overall award for the school, some students received a second award for AP Distinction and AP Honors. AP Distinction Award is uh, you have to take three or more AP tests and your average score on the AP test has to be a 3.5 or higher. The award itself means getting a 3.25 um, or higher on at least three AP exams and um, at the beginning when I first got to school it was a very rigorous, it was the teachers were uh, difficult and then the um, assignments were also difficult but the fact that I was able to like at least score four on three or more tests means a lot to me because it shows how much I've grown and improved since middle school. The teachers and students say they do not plan on stopping at sixth place. They want to go all the way. For HCTV, I'm Eric J. Dockery. To learn about HMSA, visit their website at www.hmsa.hawthornsd.org. When we return, find out how families got the extra help they needed with their kids. The Hawthorne School District has expanded their after-school program. We stopped by Eucalyptus Elementary School to bring you the story. The Hawthorne School District partnered with the after-school program right at school to bring a free high-quality program to their elementary schools. It creates a fun and safe environment for the children, uh, peace of mind for the families. The district has really invested a lot of time and resources and people into um, you know, making this program the best, the best it can be. The Right at School program offers students TK through fifth grade a safe, secure, and structured place to learn, play, and grow at their own school sites after school hours. We learn things from tech to STEM to sports to history, so your child might find their passion all while in the after school program. Just allow them to flourish. What I learn is to how to make friends and how to be nice. Some of the daily activities include physical movement, dedicated homework time, plus disguised learning activities. I can finish my homework and then do something fun and then I could play outside and then once I get home I have nothing to worry about. And they help us with our homework and they entertain us. We do our homework, they help us with it a lot and I don't know, we do exercise. This academic school year the after-school program has doubled from last year's capacity, thanks to a grant and the partnership with Right at School. We have over 200 students and families that are participating, so it's, it's great to be able to offer that resource and, and have our families you know, have a safe place for their kids to be. It's been a huge benefit to the families and just the kids themselves because you never know that this after-school program could be the most important part of your child's day. Hawthorne School District staff say they are happy with how many families they can help and the district hopes to be able to provide more after-school care for more students in the future. To learn more about the after-school program right at school, visit the district's website at www.hawthornesd.org and look under news and events. There's a popular sport with the Capture the Flag twist. Tony Long Jr. has the story. Eucalyptus Park is where the youth, ages 7 through 13, are learning to play flag football. Just teaching them the basics of uh, not only flag football, but just the sport of football in general. Um, teaching them basic rules, um, the positions of each player on the field, simple things like that. The popularity of the sport itself is growing everywhere. They've started, you know, flag football as like a high school sport now, and now you see it introduced into the Olympics recently. So we thought it'd be a good idea. Let's start with the flag football clinic and let's see where it goes. Parents see it as an opportunity to learn the game of football in a safe way. He wanted to play football, but uh, we decided to play flag football for him. It's a little bit safer for now. When he grows up a little bit more, then I'll probably think about putting them 
you know, to play contact football. The kids were having a blast learning and playing the sport. Well, mostly two things. At the end of the day, we get to play a game. And also, I like how we they make us run because, like, my running's really good. I, I actually wanted to prove it. And football in general is fun for me. I like to um, catch and receive, but I like to do quarterback too. It's just that here with friends, coach, that's the best thing that ever happened to me. The clinics have been running monthly throughout the fall season. However, there are plans to have more in the near future. There are also plans for a potential flag football league as well. For HCTV, I'm Tony Long Jr. For more information on other sport programs and clinics happening in the city of Hawthorne, visit the Betty Ainsworth Sports Center at 2851 West El Segundo Boulevard. A friendship festival was held at Weisburn Middle School. Eric J. Dockery brings us the details. The AYSO Region 21 in Hawthorne put together its 23rd annual Epic Friendship Festival on for the community. We're over here at AYSO a Friendship Festival, right, that they bring all the handicapped kids, they enjoy soccer, enjoy some other community, hot dogs, cooking by the Kiwanis Club. Uh, Danny Juarez, you know, the, does a good job putting this event together every year, so it, it's a wonderful event. God blessed me with three kids without any um, mental or physical disabilities. These kids got a rotten deal when they uh, when they were first born. I want to be a day, to, especially for them. The model for Epic is everyone plays in the community. This program provides a quality soccer experience for children and adults whose physical or mental disabilities make it difficult to successfully participate on mainstream teams. It is our first time through AYS, so we got invited and it's been an amazing experience. It's so nice having a, having a child with special needs and you feel like you're fully included. I have a both typical kid and a special needs kid, so it's really hard to balance. And I'm so glad that we got invited and how welcoming it is. There were many activities for everyone. They had a train, gamer truck, balloons, jumpers, soccer, a LA Kings hockey court, and more. I'm having a lot of fun. I got a panda balloon, and I, I like pandas. I took shots on the goal for Angel City. I pet a snake, and then I did some things with my friends at the Dave & Buster's thing. The soccer game allowed all kids to play together as one, no matter their disability. It's just like, it's fun because like people that like have like agilities, you know, but because they can't like play AYSO, but they have to play AYSO here. And it's, it gives them an opportunity to play with other people. Parents and kids said they enjoyed the festival and can't wait for the next one. For HCTV, I'm Eric J. Docker. To learn all about the Friendship Festival and who you can register to participate in the next one, visit the AYSO website at www.ayso.org forward slash epic. Keep it right here on channel 22 for these future city news stories. We'll take you to the South Bay Workforce Investment Board 28th Annual Awards Ceremony. Plus see families enjoying an evening at their school for the amazing math race. And take a look at how many families were helped at this year's Operation Gobble. Well that does it for this edition of City News. Thanks for watching. If you have any story ideas, please call us at 310 3491630 or email us at hctv at hawthornca.gov. Don't forget you can watch City News online on YouTube by searching Hawthorne Community Television. We'll leave you now with footage from Trick or Treating at City Hall. See you next time.